Okay, grade nines, what's in your blood, part two. So now we're going to look at white blood cells, which are a little bit complex. So that's why I'm making a separate um, video. Okay. So what do white blood cells do? Well, they form part of your immune system, which if you think is quite pertinent now because, you know, we in lockdown and we're dealing with this new virus, the novel COVID-19 virus. And, you know, if you get the flu, then we often do have antibodies that can already, you know, destroy that virus um, or you develop antibodies as you're getting better. So you, in, what I mean is you could have a vaccination. So your body's already got antibodies that if you are exposed to the virus, it could deal with it straight away. Or um, you've had the flu before, so your body has already made antibodies and you can get, you know, you, your body knows how to make them already and can get rid of the virus quickly, quickly. Now with the um, COVID-19 novel, um, novel COVID virus, it's new, all right? So nobody had, nobody's immune system was able to recognize these viruses as foreign and therefore none of us had antibodies or knew our, um, our white blood cells. None of our um, immune systems were able to make um, antibodies to fight this virus but if obviously if you do get COVID-19 then you would have made antibodies so you would then be immune to this particular strain unless it changes into another strain another variant of the virus okay so how does this all work well white blood cells are like normal cells they're not purple but they stain up purple when you um, prepare uh, slides for the microscope and they have odd shed nuclei states mm -hmm. before, and there are many, many different types. And some of them are the ones that, you know, like Napoleon's army, there would be the scuts that go out to see if they can find the opposition and then they go back and tell the rest of the army what's happening and then they plan an attack. So HIV, for example, is um, a virus that, it, that destroys those um, white blood cells that are at the front of the of the army okay so then if you don't have those white blood cells then they can't instruct other white blood cells you know um, and then you actually get ill you, you might get ill for you will get ill from other um, microorganisms which cause for example um, tb um, different types of like sarcomas different types of skin cancers um, you eventually you get ill from something else because your own white blood cells, your white blood cells, the, the important ones that detect invaders, have been destroyed. All right, so you're unable, your body is unable to protect you from other invading germs, either, either viral or bacteria. So people who die from um, having HIV, they don't actually die from the virus; they die from the secondary infections that they could get. Okay, so yes, white blood cells are normal cells. Um, they're part of your immune system, however, they're in the blood, and um, there are two ways in which they fight infection. So I've mentioned this one, where they make proteins called little Y-shaped proteins called antibodies. And this is a bacterium over here, a bacterial cell. So just like we all have names, okay, um, different bacteria and viruses in, and fungi, okay, when they get into your body, they have got um, little mm -hmm. receptor molecules on their surface saying, I'm a COVID-19 virus, I'm a, um, a flu virus, I'm a tetanus uh, bacterium, etc. So your body, if it's, your body is able to recognize, some of the white blood cells are able to recognize them as a foreign invader, invader, and then other white blood cells if they already know how to make the antibodies, if you've been exposed to that in kind of um, disease before, then your body already knows how to make antibodies. They've practiced doing that before. So then those antibodies will be made quickly and then they attach to the white blood cells and they stop them from working. They st oh, I'm sorry, not the white blood cells. They attach to the germ, the bacterium or the virus, and then they can't enter your cells and cause disease. All right, so that's what antibody is about. This white blood cells, Different types of white blood cells would make these proteins called antibodies against invading germs. If they already know how to make the antibodies, if you've had the disease before, or if you were vaccinated, vaccination teaches your white blood cells how to make antibodies. So if you're exposed to the real germ, then your, your white blood cells already say, yeah, I know how to do this, and they get rid of the germ quickly. 
um, so with a vaccination, they would give you, say, the virus or the bacterium, but they modified in a way um, that it's, it cannot cause you to become sick. So they might interfere with its membrane or its DNA or some structure, some cellular structure inside the germ, okay? So then the, when they inject you with that, it's a, it's a white blood cell which has been um, modified so it can't make you sick, but then your white blood cells recognize it and then they can make antibodies against it. So they practice things so that if you are exposed to the real germ, the one that can cause you to become ill, then they already know how to make antibodies. It's like, did you study for the test or didn't you? If you didn't study for the test, it's like the, the COVID-19 virus. Your body does not know how to make antibodies yet. Okay? And that's why we get um, so ill. And some people get more ill than others. And they need their white blood cells are overwhelmed. And they need to learn how to make antibodies against this um, uh, invading virus. And that is why some people, you know, it depends on their immune system. They can stay at home and self-quarantine and are better in a week or two. And other people might get really, really ill, especially if they are compromised, if their immune systems are already struggling with whatever diseases or whatever they have. You know, things like diabetes, heart disease, certain cancers, etc. The body's already tired. It's already trying to make antibodies and sort out the, those problems um, or to sort out disease. And now it's got this new virus coming in and it's you know, it's not able to cope or takes longer to cope. All right, so vaccination teaches your white blood cells how to make antibodies against invading germs so that when you are exposed to the real germ, they already know, they've studied for the test, okay? They know how to deal with it. All right, there's another way. So some of our white blood cells, they are like little amoebae. If you remember amoeba from the section on osmosis where we talked about or diffusion, how oxygen moves into this unicell and CO2 out and etc. Well, amoeba eat, um, they are unicellular organisms which catch little water fleas and things in the pond and then they take it in and they digest it. Now that's what do some of your white blood cells do. They are said to be phagocytic or a phagocyte. I don't expect you to know that word, but phago means to feed, cyte means cell, the feeding cell. So if you look here, there are the bacteria, all the viruses, and um, these white blood cells would go and engulf and take in those germs to form a little vacuole. And then there are organelles inside the cytoplasm that would release enzymes to digest those organisms, those ba invading bacterial viruses, and then they are gone, they are destroyed. So that's another way in which your white blood cells, different white blood cells, um, protect you from a disease or from part of your immune system. Okay, here is a white blood cell. It looks really odd. It looks like it's oozing along, the big ooze. And you can see all these little yellow ovals. They're not really yellow, but those are the bacteria. And this bacteria, this um, white blood cell is engulfing them and it's going to destroy them. So they're having lunch, okay? Please don't say that in the test. All right, so there's two ways. Either white blood cells make antibodies, little proteins, that attach to the bacterium and stop it from working, okay? Or they engulf them. Phagocytic um, white blood cells feed on the bacteria and digest them with enzymes. All right, now I've got here a little bit about platelets, which I said I will still explain. So what happens if you cut yourself? So now your blood is exposed to the air. You might notice it becomes sticky. All right, now what happens is yes, you are bleeding. So there's lots of blood cell, red blood cells coming out. And what happens is lots of white blood cells also go to that area. They haven't really shown them here. And then they help try and get rid of the bacteria, which are you and I are being exposed to. You know, I mean, if you cut yourself with a rusty nail in the garden, then white blood cells are going to try and prevent the um, invasion of germs from outside. Okay, but what you'll see here now is that lots of little platelets also go to the site of the wound. And like Spider-Man, they shoot out those threads and it forms a mesh. And that mesh traps the red blood cells. They shoot out these fibrin protein threads, bam, and then they trap the red blood cells. You can see lots of platelets here and there would be lots of uh, white blood cells fighting infection. And that's how a scab is formed. That's how, a, or first a blood clot, and then when, it, when the exposed blood dries, then we call it a scab. 
So here at the bottom, wait, I just want to show you here, they've shown some of the red blood cells from the side, or um, from front on, sorry, or these ones from the side. Okay, you're looking at them from the side, so you can see they caved, biconcave, but if you look at them from the front, then they look like sort of hollowed out, not really donuts, okay? And then over here, you can see some of the red blood cells, and I'm taking an educated guess that these little blobby white, yellow things, those are the platelets, and they've shot out those fibrin threads to form a mesh, to trap the red blood cells, to stop the bleeding, and it reminds me, you know, in the spa movies, and then guys are waiting in the tree or whatever, and then they drop the net, and then this, the, the criminals are caught. Okay, well, yeah, they're trying to trap your white blood cells so you don't bleed to death. Um, okay, so that's how platelets work. Let's just see, yeah, okay. So I just want to, you know, so it's when your blood is exposed to air, then this happens. This reaction happens that um, your platelets shoot out these fibers to trap the blood. Now, there was just one thing I wanted to mention. Some people may have a disease called hemophilia. Hemophilia is a bleeding disease. Your blood doesn't clot. So they are unable to do this. For some reason, their little platelets are unable to have all the chemical reactions happen that allow for, for the production of those threads. And then they bleed out. So even if they scratch themselves, it just, it's just watery blood. It just bleeds and bleeds and bleeds and bleeds. Okay, so that's quite dangerous. And that was a disease that is quite well known to have been in, um, you know, Queen Victoria's family, and she, you know, she passed it on to many of her sons. And in grade 12, we talk about why hemophilia, you know, the genetic component, why it's more common in um, males than in females. It's quite an interesting story. Okay, so the last little bit, I love putting this in. You know, um, if, if I go donate blood, then they always, they fill those little test tubes, just like these over here. They first fill a couple of those because they're going to test my blood to see if my blood, you know, if I don't have any diseases or, you know, they always ask me to fill out a form and I have to say that when I was eight, I had jaundice and, you know, things like that. They want to know your, you know, your lifestyle and all of that kind of thing. And they test your blood also to see what type of blood it is and if it's safe and, you know, they say, have you been taking medication and all of that. But what's quite interesting, if you take that blood and put it into this machine, this machine, lots of vials of, you know, different people's blood, and you put it in, then this is called a centrifuge and it spins at thousands of revolutions a second. And what it does is it separates the different components of the blood. So at the end of however long they spin it for, you end up with a test tube that looks like this. And there's the real life one. So right at the bottom would be all the heavy, heavy, heavy red blood cells. Because remember, they've got lots of iron. Okay. Um, and it says here, these red blood cells, there's some white blood cells and platelets. All right. But then um, at the top here, you'd find more white blood cells. Okay. At the top. And they are the ones, they're not red and pink and purple and blue. Remember, they're white, um, but they, uh, they're normal cytoplasm color with a nucleus, but they've been stained up and added color here. And then, you, you, okay, so you find lots of red blood cells with iron at the bottom, maybe some white blood cells. But this layer here, that's sometimes called the buffy coat. I don't know why, buffy, you know, clean, whatever, white blood cells. So that's where the white blood cells are found. And then the very, um, the liquid plasma, it's very light. It doesn't weigh much. So that will be sitting on top and you can see it over there, plasma, white blood cells, red blood cells. And that contains all the substances that are dissolved in the blood. So red blood cells carry oxygen. They mainly carry oxygen, all right? White blood cells, remember they fight disease. In the plasma would be carbon dioxide and nutrients and hormones and things that your body needs to transport around. Okay, so you need to think of the nutrients, things like vitamins as well, and any medications that you take and waste products. All of that is dissolved in the plasma. And then if it's needed by the cells, like ox, um, CO2, et cetera, it will go into the cells and waste will go back. And then various organs in your body will get rid of that. So remember, oxygen brings, um, lungs bring oxygen to your, your blood. CO2 is removed. Then you've got the kidneys getting rid of urine, which is um, water and salt. Then you've got sweat from your skin, which is also water and salt. So, you know, you've got to think of it as a fluid medium which travels around your body 
making sure that everything needs to where, go to where it needs to go. Okay, it's your Uber. All right, it's taking all the nutrients and the waste products to where they need to go. All right, so that's my, um, the end of my story about blood. So what you need to do, please, um, there are, we need to finish task five. So question number two, it's a little investigation about blood vessels and hanging um, weights on it. And question number two, I see there's a little bit of a mistake. So it says in, uh, under the bold, it says she dissected out an artery and a vein from a piece of fresh piece of meat. You can just cross out piece of again. And I want you to work through that, please, and answer those questions about, um, you know, the, com to compare the elasticity of arteries and veins. Okay, so that's on blood vessels. And then on page number 73, there's some short questions about blood, where you've got that little word, um, what do you call it? Word list, and then you choose the answers there. And then question number two, if you've been listening, all right, you would be able to fill in um, the table of on question 2A. All right, so it really sums everything up that we've been doing. And then I want you to do question B. And go and look it up if you want, if you can't remember. And then right at the bottom is a very simplified diagram, you know, where you have to label blood. So that's the tasks for this week. All right, you need to finish task five and task six. And we will mark it next week. And then we're going to have a look at the diseases because we always do something about diseases. And then we are done. And I think we need to do that Kahoot quiz again. So please, guys, I want to see those green, that green, you know, that bar graph that pops up every time people answer the questions correct. I want you guys to get that right. Okay, so please go and look at the internal structure of the heart again. I must release the marks that you got for that little heart quiz that everyone got, some people got into a flap about. It was not for marks. It was to see if you understood. So I will release those marks. And um, I think we need to do something like that again. Because when you come back, you know, we'll have probably a cycle test and the exam at the end of the year and circulation. And um, I'll let you know what else. But that will be in the exam at the end of the year. All right. So that's the end of blood. Task, three, uh, task five, task six, six. And we will mark that next week.